Vinyl On My Mind is brought to you by December 10, a curated collection with statement pieces sure to make you a perfect 10. Co-founded in 2013 by Tia Blunt and Tori Jones, this Christian company wants to leave a legacy, not just for themselves, but for all women. Their legacy began with their mothers, whose birthdays are both on December 10th. Tia and Tori handpick each piece that you will find on their site. What makes them unique is that they only order one piece. Experience this e-boutique with chic on-trend statement pieces. December 10, Love Life Legacy. Hi there, it is the first Saturday of the month, so it's time for me to welcome you to Vinyl On My Mind. Today I'll be talking about Stevie Wonder's talking book. Okay, so let's jump right in. Like I said, today I am sharing Stevie Wonder's talking book. So here it is. This is one of me and my husband's favorite albums. And ours is, it's old, it's beat up. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit. When we bought this one, it was already old and beat up on the outside, which is probably why we got such a good deal on it. I think we honestly paid like three or four dollars for it and I still felt bad about it because even though it has all kinds of damage and things that I'm going to point out to you here, the record in itself looked like it had been played maybe two or three times. It was shiny. It was perfect. So let me talk about the cover a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and admit I haven't done any previous research on these you think I would considering them that's pretty much what I'm talking about but um on this cover you know it says Stevie Wonder talking but what I really like about this cover it has braille on it and I have a couple of his others and I don't remember I, I mean I don't think they have the braille on them so this one has braille on the front it's on the back I believe no not on the back but definitely on the inside as well so that's really cool. Uh, let's see, in this cover, this could have been shot in Africa. It could have been shot in California. I don't know. But he's in the desert, and he's wearing some very ethnic art garb, I, I guess you would say. Um, he looks like kind of like um, maybe something from Africa that he's wearing. I'm not particularly sure, but the sense the, what you get from this cover is that whatever it is you're about to listen to is going to have a very soulful and spiritual aspect to it. Not religious, just really deep and meaningful. Um, so that's, you know, the cover. On the inside, um, again, my record is very old, so you can't see. He's kind of looking into the far distance of horizon. We have... A list of all the songs in the album on one side and on the other side it's details about who's performing on the album there's a lot of talent here I mean you there would have to be to record a Stevie Wonder album and then on the back my favorite part are song lyrics back when CDs were still popular <laughs> it used to irritate me when I would get one and it wouldn't have song lyrics in the in the cover I, I was like why did you even bother printing this cover if you weren't going to put song lyrics on it? So, as you can see, ours has a lot of damage on it. So we can't see all the song lyrics, but that's okay. Those songs, we know them so well, we didn't need the song lyrics. When we bought it, it was like that, which is why we got the great deal on it. The guy almost didn't want to sell it to us because he was like, it's, it's in horrible condition. Well, he's not wrong. The cover, um, this, the leaf... Um, thing here is very in bad condition but the record itself which that's the only part that really matters to me that's where the music is was like shiny and new it's still shiny I'd like to say that it's completely without flaws but it's not for people who don't listen to a lot of vinyl they don't realize there's two different kind of scratches you get on a vinyl record the one that completely destroys it there's no point listening to it anymore you might as well melt it down into an ashtray kind of a scratch but then you have those little kind of nuanced little scratches that let you know that the record has been played a lot um, it's been loved and this record has a lot of those now because we we have played this record so much 
Um, it's kind of like when you listen to a song on the radio and it has like explicit lyrics and the song plays smoothly, but when it gets to that part, it just skips kind of over that word and keeps going. It doesn't necessarily interfere with your listening pleasure, but you know that something was there and it was taken out. That's kind of what we have going on with this record right now. So we are looking for um, a new one to replace this one, but this one is still playable. And we don't have so many of those little nuances. So far, it's We've been blessed that all those little scratches have only occurred in the musical sections. We're not missing any lyrics. Yay. But this this um, record means a lot to me and my husband for very different reasons. Um, my favorite song on the album is on side A, and his favorite song is on side B. So I'm just going to play a little snippet just to see if you guys are familiar with them. Um, let's see. Side A. I'll be playing um, Maybe Your Baby. That's my favorite one, Maybe Your Baby. Let's see if I can do this. I have done this before. <laughs> see, isn't that groove just awesome? I hope you guys can hear that really well. Sorry for the tease, but that's all you get. On the other side, the last song on side B. Um, for those of you who are, you know, avid either movie fans or cult film fans, maybe both, the next song appeared at the end of the movie High Fidelity, which is why my husband loves it so much. Uh, let's see. And this one is, um, I believe it's called, let's see. I believe <laughs> that's the name of the song. So I'll just play just a little bit of it. Shattered dreams, worthless years, him I am cased inside a lotion. Yeah, obviously I'm going to need to practice at this a little bit, but I didn't get to like the really chorus part that people might recognize on that song, but find it. It's worth listening to. Also, I will try to find some of these songs, um, samples of them to include in the description below. So if you want to hear some more of what's on the album before you go out hunting for one, because I do suggest you do that, you can do that as well. So that is Talking Book, and it's... um. It's like I said, it's just a really kind of soulful album, a lot of love in it, it's fun stuff too. So um, if you can get one in better condition than mine, <laughs> go for it. But don't let the cover, you know, deter you. If you find something that's perfect on the inside, it's okay if it's a little battered on the outside because all that means is that someone really loved it. All right, then all of you out there in cyberspace, that's all I have for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed yourself. If you, um, like I said, if you want to try to hear some of the songs on this album, you can look in the description below to see if I was able to, you know, find some links to share with you. Next month, I'll be sharing the album Dusty Springfield's Golden Hits. And, of course, I'm going to tell you why I'm sharing this particular album. Um, you can follow me on Twitter. You can use the hashtag vinyl on my mind and you can share some of your vinyl stories with me. Uh, I love pictures too. If you have a story about the talking book or maybe even Dusty Springfield's greatest hits for next month, I'd love to hear it again. That's hashtag vinyl on my mind. My next posting will be on Monday and um, leave me comments. I love comments. Give me your two cents about this video. Did you like it? Did you not like it? I know. I need to work on my record play skills. So tell me other things that you know you like or didn't like about the show. I'd love to have the feedback. Uh, remember, if you are interested in hosting or even sponsoring a Toy Box episode, just visit me at etoythomas.com to learn more. And um, that's all I have. So until next time, this is Toy Thomas saying, 
I think authors are just as important to the world of entertainment as music groups and movie stars. See ya.